Welcome again friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video lecture we'll be talking about the tryptophan operon. We'll talk about what is tryptophan operon and the regulation of tryptophan operon. We'll also talk about the attenuation mediated regulation in tryptophan operon. So stay tuned and watch this video. Now for this time you should not look at this part of the board because this was uh, the lac operon part. Now in the next video I will be comparing the tryptophan operon with lac operon that is why I keep it here. Just focus on this side of the board where I will draw uh, the rest of the tryptophan operon uh, drawings. So let us now focus on. The, the first thing about tryptophan operon you know again it is a type of prokaryotic gene regulation process which is related with the synthesis of tryptophan amino acid. And you know tryptophan is a very important essential amino acid for organisms for any bacteria. Uh, for example, say in E. coli, they need to produce tryptophan because tryptophan is an integral part of so many different proteins that they require to function properly. Now what happens here, again as it is an operon, there are so many structural genes that ultimately helps to produce or, or to break down tryptophan, uh, I mean to sorry, to produce tryptophan inside the cell. Okay? So this is a type of anabolic operon pathway where you see in case of lactose operon if you figure out if you do not know what is lactose operon I will recommend you to watch my video on lac operon first because it is the simplest type of operon that we talk about and be begin with. In the lac operon what happens that is a catabolic type of operon that means the idea of lac operon is to produce certain proteins that will break down the lactose to generate energy while the tryptophan operon is anabolic type of operon where so many different proteins and enzymes will be required to produce or synthesize tryptophan inside the cell. Okay? And those genes that will ultimately code for the different uh, proteins, those genes are under one promoter known as the tryptophan promoter or TRP promoter. So let us look at here, uh, let us let's first draw the structure of the tryptophan operon. Here, we have the promoter let us say this is the this is the promoter P and there we have after the promoter we have the operator after the operator we have a stretch of DNA sequence known as the leader leader region which will code for uh, the mRNA which is known as the leader region or leader uh, sequence right after that we have the structural elements and there are five such structural elements E, D, C, B, A. Okay. So, and in these five different structural genes, they will code for five different mRNA and then finally produce for five different types of proteins. And all of those proteins will be required for the synthesis of tryptophan. Okay. For example, uh, the first two, E and D, they will produce antranilate synthase. This is a uh, because you know if you look at the tryptophan synthesis pathway the biosynthesis of tryptophan inside the prokaryotes there are different enzymes required for different stages to produce tryptophan one of such enzyme is antranilate synthase antranilate synthase is produced by e and d c is will produce antranilase antranilate isomerase b produces tryptophan synthase b and uh, tryptophan synthase beta uh, this is an enzyme a produces tryptophan synthase alpha. So, in a, in a short term I can write it like antranilate synthase, two varieties, antranilate isomerase and B produces tryptophan synthase beta, A produces tryptophan synthase alpha. These are the proteins that those genes will make which will ultimately help to produce tryptophan, biosynthesis of tryptophan will be possible. Now, Operon is a mode of gene regulation in prokaryotes we know. So we put all these genes under one promoter means we want to control the expression of all those genes. The bacteria want to control the expression of all these proteins so that they can control the production of tryptophan in a big picture. So how they will do that? For this regulation they also have another specific gene upstream of the promoter of tryptophan that is known as R or repressor which is uh, uh, coded by another uh, tryptophan repressor promoter. 
So this R, when it's transcribed and translated, it produces the repressor. Produces the repressor molecule, known as the tryptophan repressor molecule. Now this is produced continuously. Just like the lac operon, you also know lac operon is also regulated by a lac inhibitor molecule. Similarly, here also they keep on producing this repressor molecule all the time. But the thing is, this repressor molecule is kind of aporepressor. What we mean by aporepressor? Aporepressor means this repressor normally once it's produced, it's made, they don't have the capability to interact with the operator site. So normally this though the repressor is present inside the cell, but it will not be able to bind with the operator. So operator region is free. So RNA polymerase can easily in interact with promoter and can transcribe all the structural genes. This is the normal scenario. So normally this promoter is not turned off. So by default tryptophan operon is turned on. But remember if we remember for the lac operon, by default the lac operon is turned off. It should be turned on once the lactose is present in the environment. On the other hand in tryptophan operon, it is turned on. Because the idea is we need to produce tryptophan, it is an essential amino acid and we need to keep producing it. So they keep producing tryptophan inside the cell, turned on. Though there is repressor, but the structure in such a way it will not be able to bind. But now how we regulate? Think of this simple idea. We want to create tryptophan in our body. So if there is no tryptophan at all in our cell, then what we will do? We will produce tryptophan. So if there is no tryptophan, we want to produce it. So we want to turn the operon on. But let's say if there is a lot of concentration of tryptophan inside the cell, we produced it a lot. What will happen then? If there is high concentration of tryptophan inside the cell, we don't want tryptophan to produce, we don't want it to produce further. So we want to turn tryptophan operon off. So when we turn it off, when the concentration of tryptophan is high inside the cell. So let, let me write this uh, gist here. When there is no tryptophan, the operon is on. When there is tryptophan or high concentration of tryptophan, the operon is turned off. So normally inside the cell when there is no tryptophan or very less tryptophan, the operon is turned on by default, on by default. But now let us say after several rounds of tryptophan production, the concentration of tryptophan goes high inside the cell and that condition, what tryptophan can do is that tryptophan can bind with this repressor, one specific tryptophan binding site. Say this is tryptophan. Once the concentration of tryptophan is high, some part of the tryptophan, some tryptophan molecules will go and attach to this repressor. Once tryptophan is bound with the repressor, it modifies the structure of repressor. It modifies the structure of repressor and now repressor along with the tryptophan attached condition it can go and bind with operator region. So the repressor which was inactive from the beginning that means the aporepressor is now activated by the presence of tryptophan. So now this repressor can sit to the operator region it will block the RNA polymerase movement uh, through this genes. So as a result, tryptophan operon will be turned off and that is justified. If we have high concentration of tryptophan, it should be turned off because if you already have tryptophan in our body, there is no need to produce more tryptophan, right? So here that is the idea. This is the scenario is completely different with lac operon. Remember, in lac operon, lactose induces the operon, but here the concentration of tryptophan reduces the operon. So in a sense, concentration of tryptophan is auto-regulating the synthesis of tryptophan here. It's a self-regulatory pathway that we can see, right? So that is a basic level of tryptophan regulation that we see. But again, 
like uh, this lactose operon we also see the presence of glucose also provide us a second round of regulation uh, a very fine tuning of the operon similarly in case of tryptophan we also have a fine tuning by a sequence known as the leader sequence and how exactly let's look at here this is known as the tryptophan operon attenuation and this is the attenuation mediated control of tryptophan operon now if you look at this leader peptide you will find there are five uh, different segments in the leader pe peptide and among those different segments uh, in the first fuse in the first segment there are two tryptophan coding regions okay so if we divide this leader sequence let me do that here if we divide this leader region if we, if we zoom into the leader sequence it will look something like this and let's say this is the 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 let's say 5 five different segments of leader now here in this first part of the leader sequence there two tryptophan coding regions are present and then rest of the regions if we if we see if we look at the mrna structure of the uh, region number 2 3 and 4 we will see important pattern what is the pattern that this 2 and 3 can can be self paired because uh, the sequence are placed in such a way 2 and 3 can bind with each other and form a stem loop okay similarly 3 and 4 can also bind and pair and form a stem loop they have a kind of palindromic structure in there let's say if there is a a g in this case there will be u u c so this is a palindromic structure which helps them to properly it's a kind of complementary structure so if they fold one two can pair with three three can pair with four okay you know that but the feature here if three pairs with four if three pairs with four in that case that stem loop structures feature is completely different when the two pairs with three because the structure will vary and depending upon the stem loop structure sometimes the process of transcription can be terminated i mean the process of uh, translation can be terminated not transcription because you know the regulation that we saw till now the regulation we saw till now is the level of transcription but this attenuation regulation is at the level of translation and you know what happens in prokaryotes i also told you earlier in prokaryotes the process of transcription and translation occurs simultaneously that means rna is being made ribosome is sitting on it and the ribosome is making proteins at the same time when the transcription is going on so let's say the part of the regions of leader region is already Mm, uh, transcribed into mrna now ribosome will sit on it and scan for it for each codon they will start adding amino acid sequence and make the polypeptides now when they are doing it they will go and migrate through all leader mrna sequence okay and what i told this three can pair with four two can pair with three okay so this 3 4 once it forms a stem loop it is known as a terminator stem loop okay terminator stem loop because once this stem loop is formed ribosome cannot break it down ribosome will also fall off from the mrna and rest of this genes edcba will not be translated okay that is the terminator so no translation it will be stopped now 2 3 can also pair and form stem loop if 2 3 forms a stem loop that stem loop is known as anti terminator stem loop why because this stem loop has not the ability of terminating the translation even if 2 3 pairs and form a stem loop ribosome can easily pass through it so translation can go on okay so now let's see the scenario here what will happen now let's assume there is very low concentration of tryptophan present inside the cell so 
tryptophan concentration is low or no tryptophan for example this is the first scenario that we want to look very low concentration so what will happen ribosome is now attached to the mrna because remember the process of transcription and translation occurs simultaneously so as we are we are at this point of leader and the polymer is rna polymer is moving so the rna is being made some part of the leader rna is made ribosome will also be uh, attached to the mrna to make proteins so once at the first sequence of the leader region there is two consecutive tryptophan residue remember so ribosome now sitting on the first part of the sequence of leader and as there are two tryptophan residues back to back they want you know here at this area first two tryptophan residues so these are the codons for the amino acid two tryptophan codons are there so the scenario is mrna is there ribosome is moving and ribosome will brought all those tRNA along with the amino acid sequence and properly attach and, and pair the amino acid sequence with the peptide bonds that's how the polypeptide is made now here once there are two consecutive tryptophan residues but there is very low concentration of tryptophan present inside the cell so what those tRNA will do tRNA will take more time to bring the tryptophan because the tryptophan concentration is very low inside the cell so it will take some time so ribosome will stay in the sequence number 1 for some extra time we call it a stalling of ribosome so ribosome will stall there for a, for a, for a moment at this sequence number 1 in search for tryptophan so meanwhile we know 2 and 3 these two sequences are free 3 and 4 are also free now 2 and 3 as these two sequences are free they can pair with themselves and form the stem loop structure known as anti terminator so the ribosome while stalling for tryptophan amino acids 2 and 3 pairs itself form the anti terminator loop now the ribosome once uh, the tryptophan is brought properly and the ribosome will again start moving it will clearly pass this stem loop easily because this is an anti terminator i told you earlier so ribosome can easily pass through the this loop they will open the loop and easily pass through the loop and then it can continuously synthesize all the genes and it produces all the proteins e d c b a it will produce all the proteins as a polypeptide stretch okay now now so what does that mean that means the operon is turned on and that is justified right because there is low concentration of tryptophan the operon should be turned on and here the operon is turned on so that is justified now let's say another scenario let's say the concentration of tryptophan is already high inside the cell what will happen then if the concentration of tryptophan is high inside the cell while the ribosome is moving through sequence number 1 they don't need that much of time to stop there because there are too much tryptophan inside and the tRNA can bring tryptophans very very fast and easily right so in that case tRNA can bring the tryptophan very fast so ribosome is not paused at any part of the sequence 1 so it is moving very very fast and during the movement it occupies some part of the sequence 1 as well as some part of the sequence 2 ribosome will attach so sequence 2 is occupied a little bit one is also occupied a little bit so what two sequences are free sequence 3 and 4 and we know sequence 3 and 4 can also pair and form a stem loop in this case 3 and 4 are forming a stem loop and this stem loop is known as a terminator type of stem stem loop which stop the translation process because this stem loop is very strong and ribosome cannot pass the stem loop so once this stem loop is formed ribosome is moving it will not be allowed to pass this stem loop so ribosome will fall off and the translation for the rest of all the all the genes like e d c b a will be also halted and the, and the proteins will not be made so you see if the tryptophan is present attenuation also take controls that no tryptophan should be produced because it's an anabolic pathway and it requires a lot of energy of the cell so cell don't want to produce tryptophan if it's there already right 
So this in a sense of the attenuation regulation of tryptophan. We know there are two types of regulation. One is with the tryptophan regulator, the aporepressor itself. And the second one is of much more fine tuning at the level of translation where we regulate it. Okay. So this in a sense about the tryptophan operon and I hope you understand it very well. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more and more molecular video videos like that and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.